These are two of the most unique power stations on the market, and they can do things like being able to output at least 6,000 watts from a 240 volt outlet right on the side. Both of these were sent to me by the respective companies, the Anchor F3800 and the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra. And in this video, I wanna do a comparison between the two of them. So let me begin by talking about what makes these two power stations stand out in a crowded field of larger power stations. And one of the big differences between these guys and others is that they have these 240 volt outputs. The F3800 has this 50 amp style. This is a NEMA 1450 plug. And it also has the L1430. This is a locking plug. So if you had a generator cable like this one, you can just plug it, plug it in and turn it to lock it. The Delta Pro Ultra can also do 240 volts, but it only has one output versus the two on the F3800. But again, you can just get your generator cable, plug it in and twist it to get the 240 output. These power stations also stand out because they're good options for home power backup or to save money if you have time of use rates. For home backup, you can use them as a drop-in replacement where you might use a gas generator. So here's a inlet box right here, and I just have it plugged directly into the side of the battery and this generator inlet box runs this critical loads sub panel. And so all I have to do is turn this on. So the F3800 can output 6,000 watts of continuous power. You can see I'm pretty close to that. I'm running my hot water heater, refrigerator, chest freezer, lights, and some other things throughout the house. So now I have the Delta Pro Ultra hooked up and it can output up to 7,200 watts. So 1,200 more on a consistent basis than what the F3800 can do. And here I have the same loads hooked up, plus I added a little bit more. So you can see I have a consistent uh, about 6,500 watts that are powering the house. So besides using the 240 output, what you can do is get some extra hardware with these guys if you wanted to wire something into your home's electrical system. So for example, here I have the DPU plugged right into this guy. This is the EcoFlow Smart Home Panel 2. It's basically a smart sub panel, and you could connect up to three Delta Pro Ultras. Anchor has one that's coming out too next month. It's called the Home Power Panel. It's not a critical loads panel like this. It's an AC coupled device that's going to sit in front of your critical loads panel. So I'm not comparing the Smart Home Panel 2 to the Home Power Panel, just showing you what you can do if you want to expand with these battery systems. Uh, but if you do, you can use the smartphone app to monitor and control how the batteries get charged and discharged. Besides connecting them into a generator inlet box to power loads in your house, you can also use them as standalone, say 240 loads, like a well pump, or even if you needed to charge an EV and get a few extra miles in the tank. And if you wanted to charge an EV, the F3800 has this feature that I hadn't seen before. Where you click the inverter button twice, you get an icon on the screen that has a picture of a car. And one of the reasons that you'd wanna do that is that if you're going to charge your electric vehicle from one of these ports and your charger needs to have the ground bonded to the neutral, not just a floating ground, this has a relay inside of it with a resistor in between. It is a uh, one kilo ohm resistor that is between those. And if I were to turn it off and I turn on the inverter just by itself with a one click, I'm not measuring anything. So the neutral is not bound to the ground in this case. Now over here on the DPU, this is what I'm gonna call it, because you only have this 1430 style plug, if your EV requires a 50 amp style like this, you might need to get a dog bone connector. In terms of bonding neutral and ground, I'm not aware that the Delta Pro Ultra has that sort of one click feature. So you, what you would probably need to do is to get a bonding plug and then just plug it into one of these other ports over here to get that neutral to ground bond. So even though the DPU only natively has that one 240 volt output, it can do 7,200 watts versus the 6,000 watts. They also have more expandable options through this port over here. EcoFlow calls this the five plus eight port. And an extra thing you can get is a 50 amp hub. It comes with a cable that you plug in here and it plugs in over here. So with one DPU plugged in, you can get 7,200 watts out of this port. If you get a second DPU plugged in, you can get the full 12,000 watts, 50 amps per phase out of this outlet. As far as I know, Anchor is coming out with something similar if you wanted to pair two F3800s. In addition to the significant power output on these inverters, another aspect I would say that helps these stand out is the DIY expandability. So if you just have the F3800 by itself, that gives you 3.84 kilowatt hours of storage capacity. The Delta Pro by itself with the one battery down here is 6.1 uh, 
kilowatt hours of storage capacity. It does have a separate inverter, so there's two pieces that you have to get in two separate boxes and connect them together, whereas the F3800 is just one unit itself. But in terms of expanding, I have a, an external battery on here. That's what this guy is up here. This adds another 3.84 kilowatt hours of storage capacity. So with this connected right here, it's a little under 7.7. .7. So it's great if you're thinking about using this as a power backup for your home. You don't have to buy all of the storage all at once. You can start with one battery or two batteries. And because it's DIY expandable, very easy to add them in. So for example, if you needed to add more batteries on the F3800, it just plugs in right here. It does have this cable that sticks out quite a bit more but on the the dpu what you would do is you would just stack up another battery open up this compartment and plug it in and that way you can get another 6.1 kilowatt hours of storage capacity note this cable here is kind of nice because it's a 90 degree cable it doesn't stick out uh, like the other one does so in terms of total capacity per inverter on the dpu you can have up to five batteries which is about 30 kilowatt hours of storage and you can stack them all up and then on the f3800 you can have six extra batteries for a total capacity a little under 27 kilowatt hours in addition to that diy expandability where you can just plug in extra storage as you have need. Another aspect of these guys that I think helps them stand out is what I'm going to call movability, if that's even a word. So if you have these in your garage or in your house and you want to move them somewhere else, so if you move your house location or say you want to use one of these in your RV for months at a time, uh, or you want to put it in the back of your car and take it to a picnic or something else, uh, these are able to do that. The F3800 is much more mobile, in my opinion, than the Delta Pro Ultra, and I also think that fits their design. This is probably designed more to stay in a location in your garage or in your house, and this one is kind of a little bit more versatile in that respect. It, this one, out of the box, you don't have to set anything up. You can just wheel it around. It's got wheels on the bottom. It also has a handle on the bottom. Oh, it also has these rubber spots here so you can put it in a different orientation. So it'll fit in the bay, bottom bay of a Class A RV, for example. It's got a handle down here, so you can pick it up. It is heavy, 132 pounds, so you might want to have a friend help you pick it up at least I always grab a family member when I'm moving this car around up and down the stairs. The Delta Pro Ultra, the, the stand that it's on right now with these wheels, this little kit, is extra. I have it on there just to, to move it around. It's an extra thing you have to get, but it comes uh, natively with this cart. And so if you want to get the cart like this, if you are planning to move it around more, uh, this thing has worked great because it attaches on there, holds everything together, and it has a telescoping handle. To, in order to move this around and also has those wheels in the back uh, to you know tip it up so those are some of the things that i think help these two units stand apart from others next i want to do more of a direct comparison between the two units so for comparison i want to talk about outputs inputs cost and share some other thoughts starting with dc outputs on the f3800 it has three usb c ports two usb a and it has a 12 volt car port the delta pro ultra does not have one of these so if you're taking this on a tailgate and you want to plug in your portable refrigerator this one has that port right on there. The DPU has two USB-C and two USB-A ports and it has these little covers on here because this guy is IP54 rated, which is also why it has these magnetic doors with a gasket on it. And while there's not a 12 volt car port, there is a 30 amp 12 volt Anderson port. And I think the design choice there shows the kind of the different use case where one may be used for more portability and then this one is maybe more for permanent, say like in a van life situation. So for native AC outputs, I've already talked about the 240 volt port. The DPU has this 30 amp, 120 volt RV style port, and then it has four 120 volt, uh, 20 amp rated outputs. These here with an AC source plugged into it uh, have a zero millisecond UPS uh, switch over time. 
and then these have a 20 millisecond switch over time. At least that's what they're rated for. I don't have the equipment to actually test that. For the F3800, I already mentioned that this port is different. It has six 120 volt outlets, and these three on the side are the ones that are rated for a 20 millisecond UPS switchover. And again, I don't really have an easy ability to measure the exact milliseconds, but I have tested the UPS feature on both of these units and they do work. Now let's talk about inputs, and I think this is the category where we're gonna to start to see more of a divergence between these two units. First, let's start with my favorite way to charge any battery, and that is with solar panels. On the F3800, there are two XT60 connectors for a DC input. You're mostly going to be using these with solar panels, although you could use them with another DC source, like the 12 volt uh, source in your car. That'll take quite a while. Uh, but mostly thinking about solar, these are rated for 1200 watts of solar input each for a total of 2400 watts, and they are two separate MPPTs. Now, one thing I want to point out is that the upper limit on the voltage that's printed on the side here is 60 volts. And that's significant because if you have a rigid solar panel, say like a 400 watt solar panel, and that voltage on that panel is rated for 40 volts, that means you can't put two of them in series on either one of these ports because in, when you have them in series, the voltage adds up. And so in that case, say it was 40 volts. If we have two of them in series, that's 80 volts. We can't use that. And so what you need to do is parallel those panels and where that would add up the amperage uh, and keep the voltage the same. So you'd have to manage that so that you're under the 60 volt limit or you're under the 25 amp limit. Now, I have heard from Anchor that they are aware that people know these limitations and they are getting some feedback. They are working to uh, do what they can to increase these limits. I don't know what that is yet. Maybe it could be a firmware update. Uh, that actually happened with EcoFlow with the Delta Pro a few years back. They were able to push a firmware update to increase these uh, solar input limits. So we'll have to see what may happen on the F3800. So that said, if you are going to use portable solar panels, so you're going to put one on each of these, that's not going to be a problem. But if you do need to parallel them, the F3800 comes with this 3 to 1 branch connector. There are two of them. These are MC4 connections. And that will enable you to parallel your panels to be under these limits. Solar input on the DPU is a little bit different. There's actually two inputs for solar. This one is a low voltage solar input. It comes with an MC4 to what looks like an XT90 connection that you can plug in right there. This has a limitation down to 30 volts and an upper limit of 150 volts. And I think the, uh, the limitation there to point out is that uh, the 30 volt lower limit. And so I tried to use this with a 100 watt solar panel, for example, and it didn't work because that was too low. So this, again, is kind of geared for a more bigger setup. So this low voltage solar port can handle up to 1600 watts of solar input. Over here is a high voltage solar input. There's these MC4 connections. These can handle up to 4,000 watts of solar, and you can combine it with the low voltage to get 5,600 watts of solar input. These MC4s can handle 80 volts up to 450 volts. So if you do need to put many rigid solar panels in series, uh, as long as you're under 450 volts, this will be able to accept that. And so what that means is uh, practically, if you have this in your garage and you have a rooftop solar array, and you have it properly grounded, I don't know if you noticed there was a grounding screw over here, that, uh, that you could use this to power your home and accept all of that solar input. In terms of charging from wall AC, both of them come with a cable to charge with a regular 120 outlet. One difference is that when you're doing bypass mode, when you're charging and outputting at the same time, on the Delta Pro Ultra, you can get 1800 watts in and 1800 watts out. That's 15 amps. But on the F3800, you're only going to get 1440 watts out. I asked Anchor for the reason for that, and they said it's due to a safety requirement where they're trying to reach 80% of a breaker's rated value. Some other considerations when we're talking about input on these two guys, the F3800 can have multiple inputs at the same time. You can have wall AC, solar, it'll add them up. You can also get adapters like this for the DPU that allows you to charge at 240, or there's one that allows you to charge in the EV station. You can add up those charging methods. On the F3800, you're a little bit more limited. If you do have a DC input like solar panels here, and then you plug in the wall AC, it's going to prioritize wall AC and charge from that, and it'll turn this DC input off. Another big consideration when we're talking about inputs is basically use case scenario, at least I'd put it under that label because when you're inputting 120 volts on either one of these, the Delta Pro Ultra is going to be able to output 120 and 240 at the same time. On the F3800, if you have 120 coming in, you will be able to get 120 out on these outlets, 
but unfortunately it shuts off the 240 outputs. And so in one scenario where that is a factor is that if you're going to be using this say in your RV and you pull up to a campsite and you're, you have your RV plugged into these 240 ports, you're using power and then you plug in the 120 to recharge the batteries at your campsite, it's going to turn this off. So you're going to have to wait until it recharges before you can use the 240 uh, outlets. Uh, but you can plug in the 120 outlets and use those. Now this limitation on these 240 volt outlets only happens when you're going to input 120 and use these at the same time. If you have solar panels hooked up, you can charge by solar and use the 240 at the same time. So the Delta Pro Ultra is the only one that I'm aware of where you can input 120 and output 240 at the same time or input 240 with those adapters on the side and then output 240 or 120. Now let's talk about cost. I'm going to use numbers available as of this recording, but check the video description. I'll keep it updated with the latest deals and if I can score any coupons. So we'll start with the Delta Pro Ultra, the lowest price I can find right now which is actually a little bit higher than it was with the launch coupons, uh, is on Amazon for $5,045.13. And because it has a different storage than the F3800, let's compare price per watt. So if I divide this by its capacity, 6,144 watt hours, that is going to give us 82 cents per watt hour of storage. And to get a little closer comparison between these two, I'm gonna consider the F3800 with the extra battery because that puts it at 7.6 kilowatt hours of storage. A little higher, but a little, also a little closer than the DPU. And the cheapest I found online was actually this random deal on Home Depot with free shipping for 4,249, and that is with the extra battery. So if we divide that number by the capacity that gives us 55 cents per watt hour. So that's very good for a power station. So quite a bit different in price per watt hour of storage for each of these guys. Now I've seen this Home Depot, Depot deal come and go. So again, I'll keep the video description updated. Uh, but comparing the two of these in this configuration, you'll get 25% uh, more uh, storage capacity than, uh, than the DPU, but the DPU has more input and output power options and some other options. So they aren't really apples to apples comparisons. So you'll have to weigh the price and features along your use case if you're thinking about getting one of these. So my final category is some other thoughts I have between the two of these as I consider using them. I would say that one of those is in the smartphone app on the EcoFlow. You have a little bit more options in terms of control so you, you can set things like automation uh, rules, or you can change the charge and discharge cycle. There's the slider where you can change the charging and discharging limits. Both of these work with a smartphone app, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So they both have that, but there's a little bit more on the, the EcoFlow app in my opinion. Another thing is the noise on both of these guys. Their, their fan noise on both of these is very low. So either one you're not gonna have a problem with, but the Delta Pro Ultra is, I would say, the quietest power station that I have ever tested. So if it's sitting in your garage, maybe you don't care about fan noise, uh, but if you do care about fan noise, uh, the edge definitely goes to the Delta Pro Ultra. And speaking of garages, another factor is that the Delta Pro has self-heating inside of the batteries, so you can use them down to negative four degrees Fahrenheit. The F3800 doesn't have self-heating, so you'd wanna avoid using it in below freezing temperatures. So if you live in a colder climate like I do in Pennsylvania, and you want a more permanent installation where the power station is going to be below freezing temperatures, then you might want to consider the Delta Pro Ultra. So there's a lot of similarities, obviously some differences between these two, but I did try my best in case you were thinking about getting one of these. If you have any questions, post them down below, and I will do my best to try to answer them. Thanks for watching.